Does an apple a day really keep the doctor away? Well, for some of you, yes, but for many of you, not so much. I happen to be one of those people. Today, we're gonna to talk about certain foods, including many of these healthy fruits and vegetables that have a lot of nutrition in them, but for some people, they cause all sorts of havoc in their digestive system. I'm talking about FODMAPs. What's that you say? FODMAPs, F-O-D-M-A-P-S. You've probably maybe heard of it, maybe not. But that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode of Lean Healthy Ageless. Hi, Robin here. If you're a woman 45 plus looking to experience your best health, your best body, and your best vitality, no matter what your age, you have come to the right place. And if you find this video informative and useful, don't forget to click the like button. So what is a FODMAP? You may have heard of it. It's becoming more of a buzzword term out in the health arena because there's a lot more research that has been done on it in recent years. FODMAPs are carbohydrates. They're mostly sugars and they're basically these short chain carbohydrates that are fer they ferment in the digestive tract. And for some people, those fermentable carbohydrates are not able to be broken down and assimilated in the digestive process in the small intestine. So what happens is these components pass into the large intestines and get eaten up by bacteria that's living in there. But that causes havoc. And the havoc could be linked to what we would typically think of as IBS symptoms, such as bloating abdominal pain, gas, um, and even constipation or diarrhea. So I don't know about you, but I was having problems with some of these areas. And I know a lot of women, mature women, they say even after following our Eat, Live, Thrive diet, where they've done an elimination diet and they've pulled out many food culprits, they're still having these issues. And in our coaching at, with the Eat, Live, Thrive Academy, what we do is we encourage them at that point, if they've already done our regular elimination, we tell them there's some other things that you may want to test. And FODMOPs is one of the first things that we go to. There are basically five different types of FODMAPs. I'm going to tell you the names. I'm not going to describe each one because it's all scientific and that's not what I do. But the first one is fructose. Then there's lactose. There are fructans, galactagins, and then polyols. Like I said, very science-oriented words. But I just want to break this down into the easy-to-understand type of information that helps me and will possibly help you too. So let's talk about some of the foods that we know are high in these FODMAPs. And I just want to mention that you can, if, if you're sensitive to a particular FODMAP, um, you may be able to eat small amounts of it and not have it cause a problem. It's when you get into typical serving size. And when I say small amounts, I might mean, you know, a couple bites of something isn't necessarily going to set you off. But if you have a full serving size, it may. So let me give you an example. This apple, which I love apples, but they don't love me. And I realized through doing some testing, we'll talk about that in the next video, that when I ate apples, I had bloating going on in my lower abdomen. It wasn't horrible, but I, I didn't feel great. And I didn't know that it was coming from this apple until I'd done some testing. Other FODMOPs, and we're going to give you a list so you can uh, print it out if you want. But for example, an artichoke, asparagus. Um, onions and garlic are considered a FODMAP, dairy, cow's milk dairy actually, and coconut flour because it's very concentrated. I can eat coconut, but coconut flour causes some issue. Like I said, if you might be sensitive to one FODMAP and not another. So there are certain foods like cauliflower is a FODMAP. I can eat and tolerate a decent amount of cauliflower, but if I eat too much of it too many days in a row, I'm going to have problems beans and for most most people can't digest beans it doesn't matter if you're FODMAP sensitive or not for many people we know that it does cause bloating or gas and then some of the foods that you wouldn't necessarily suspect but nuts certain nuts not all nuts so for example this is a mixed bag of nuts we've got almonds cashews and pistachios all of these are considered FODMAPs macadamia nuts and organic peanuts are considered 
that they are low in FODMAP. So you still have options, even if you are sensitive to, to some nuts, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be sensitive to all. Other foods that are not considered um, high in FODMAP would be an orange. This would cause me no problem, potato, lemons. There's all sorts of, of foods that are still good and don't have these high FODMAPs in them. If you would like a list of most of the high FODMAP foods and some of the science that goes behind FODMAPs, then click the link below and we'll get you access to that right away. Now that I've shared with you what FODMAPs are, on our next video, I'm gonna teach you how to figure out if you do have any FODMAP sensitivities and what to do about it. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, click the subscribe button above, as well as click the little bell icon and that will notify you every time we put up a new video.